How's it going guys? Today I am going to make a video about um, GFB electronic boost controller install. So in a previous video we actually did a install of our turbo kit on a BK2 Genesis Coupe. It's the same exact car um, but we're going to install a external uh, boost controller from GFB. It's an electronic one to the car and I'm going to show you how to route the lines um, how to do the uh, the vacuums and all that. So stay tuned and I'll try to make this as simple as possible. Okay, so the first things first, you always have to look at your instruction manual, okay? One thing I would say that you need to always look at is on the third page. So if you look on here, it gives you two different diagrams. So the one up top is for an internal wastegate. The one on the bottom is for external wastegate. Okay, and right now on our turbo kit, we use internal. So this is gonna be the diagram that we go off of. So if you see the vacuum line connects to port two and port three and leaves port one open. Okay, so let me show you what we did. Okay, so right here, port two, you can see the number right there, and port three. So they provided us with these fittings, but they don't provide us Teflon. So get some Teflon tape from your Home Depot or AutoZone and make sure you tighten them up, tighten them up nicely. Just don't overdo them. There's no need to break the actual cylinder while you're doing it. It does not go in all the way. So keep that in mind. You're go always going to have a lot of thread left over. So that's important. You really need to get this correct. Otherwise your boost controller will not control boost. Okay. And whenever we do a lot of custom tunes, customers always mess this part up for some reason. So always double check. Okay. So always look. All right. So this setup isn't actually just a standard for all, uh, all electronic boost controllers. So keep that in mind. Always refer to your um, owner's manual to see how these things go. So we sell both the GFB and the Gretty kits. Gretty kit actually uses port two and port one instead of two and three like the GFB does. So always double check that. All right, now let's move on to actually wiring this thing up. So if we look at the manual here, on the second page, it shows you the different wiring diagrams. Now let's, don't even worry about this. I know like sometimes all this can get confusing, especially for people that haven't done wiring before, but all you really need to look at is the red wire and the black wire. All right, so the blue wire is optional. Yellow wire is also optional, meaning you don't really need to use that. The yellow wire um, is a signal wire that you can take off from your wideband gauge, like an aftermarket AEM gauge or something um, that you could hook into the digital display here. That's totally optional. If you don't have one, don't even worry about it. Again, the blue wire is also another input. Um, you could actually put a, uh, a switch on it. Again, we're going to skip all that because there's no need to use that. Okay. So the only two wires we really need to worry about is the red wire and the black wire. The red wire, we're going to put an ignition source to it. That way the actual controller only boots up when the car is on and it turns off with the car and you know we're not gonna have to worry about it draining the battery or anything like that and ground is pretty straightforward all right now i'm going to show you how to run these wires in the genesis coupe there's a very simple way to do this without drilling any holes or anything like that so follow along all right so i got the light on we're in the driver's side uh footwell we're, what we're gonna do is if you see this right here Okay, this is where your hood cable, the hood latch cable actually goes through. All right, that's actually a pretty big hole where we can fish a lot of wires through, but you see this rubber grommet? So all we have to do is just take this rubber grommet off and we're gonna be able to fish through the wires that we need. All right, so there's no drilling holes. Um, we don't have to worry about like, you know, hitting something in the back, anything like that, because the hole is already pre-drilled from factory and we just need to pull this off, all right? Now you could put like a little flathead screwdriver on it and start peeling it, or you can take a, a needle, nose prior, uh, needle nose pliers and just pull it right out, all right? So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so as you can see, I got the rubber grommet out. All I have to do is slide that back out and you see we've exposed the hole there, all right? 
Now all we have to do is fish the wire harness through. Let's see here, let me grab the wiring harness so I can show you which end to fish through. So we wanna fish through this end. This little plastic end snugly fits through that hole, okay? So we're gonna fish that through from the engine bay inside. And then what did I say earlier? We're only gonna worry about the red and black wire. Red and black. And the blue and yellow, we're just gonna tie off and put it off to the side in case, you know, the client wants to actually add those accessories on down the road, which I highly doubt. I haven't seen anyone really do it down the road, anything, but <laughs> you never know, all right? Let me show you where on the actual engine bay side we're gonna fish this through in a minute. Okay, so this is where the ECU sits. So we're on the driver's side, as you can see. Here's your ECU, and that hole is going to be down there. You see a little, little hole down there? I don't know if you can make it out with the camera, but... Uh, yep, there it is, here. I'll try to put an arrow to it so you can see it. Um, but it's that little hole there, uh, that's where it's going to go through. The easiest way, if you have smaller hands, I mean, obviously you can do it, you can put it in there right now, but I'm going to actually remove the ECU bracket and pull the ECU off so I could put my hand in there and fish that, fish that right through, okay? Okay, as you can see, I got it right through there. If I can get the camera to actually show you well, but yeah, it goes right in. That little plastic clip piece fits right in there. Doesn't take much effort. Okay, so make sure you get that in there and then we're just gonna pull it right through until we have enough slack on the other side. So let's go here. Let's take a look. There, let me turn the light on. There we go. You can see the plug right here. I'm just gonna pull it right through. Now, don't pull it all the way out, but I'm gonna what? I'm gonna pull just the wire out, you know. I'll leave the black piece in because that has to go and connect to the solenoid. And then make sure we have enough slack, you know, depending on where you're going to mount the actual controller, you know, up here, up here, up here. So give us some enough slack and leave it out. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we need to figure out is where we're gonna put the solenoid and if this harness is going to reach it. So we have enough room with the harness, as you can see to go anywhere we want. So what I ended up doing was I found this to be a great place to mount the solenoid. How I did it, if you look, there's two little small holes on each side on the bottom of the solenoid, which you could use the supplied um, zip ties that comes with the kit to actually zip tie it right onto this bracket that's there from factory. It's on there nice and secure. It's actually not that close to the heat source, so it's not going to be destroying the, the solenoid. You know, like I don't want you to put it here right where the hot heat source is, but this is far enough away uh, where we don't have to worry about that heat. It's in clear view. It's easy to replace if we need to down the road, and the wire reaches pretty well without, has, without any issues, okay? So let me wire this up, and then I'm also going to run the vacuum lines, and I'll explain that to you how, um, how that's done. Okay, so now I'm done running the vacuum lines. So port two, which is the side port, runs to the wastegate. So if you look here, you can see it's connected to the wastegate right there, okay? And then port three, which comes out the front of the um, solenoid, runs to the source port, which you can see right between the two runners there. And I'll put an arrow there as well so you can see but it runs there on the face of the actual turbo. That's where you're gonna, going to get uh, the most accurate boost reading. So it's going to read the boost and it's going to bleed whatever needs to be bled in order for the wastegate to function at the level of boost that you want in the controller, okay? One thing I do wanna add on a BK2, as this kit is meant for both BK1 and BK2, this kit actually comes with a OEM style blow off valve down there. I know it's hard to see because we just installed everything, but you see that? All right. Now with the BK2s or even BK1s that have um, aftermarket blow-off valves already, like this car already has a blow-off valve. Simplest way to make sure this valve stays closed without spending extra money on a block-off plate is to run it off 
the OEM blue source, which is right on the intercooler piping. You see that? And straight into it. Basically, what the, that's going to do is whenever the car is in motion, so whenever the car is making anything but vacuum, which in this hot side piping, there's no vacuum. It's always going to be positive pressure. It's going to just keep that blow off valve closed, pretty much making it a block off plate at that point. Okay, so that's what you want to do. <clears throat> Obviously, on a BK1, you won't have this port. Then all you have to do is actually take a T off of this um, port three vacuum line and run it to that. It's going to serve the exact same purpose. All right. Okay, so if you can actually follow the line, I have it running this way towards the back, under the heater hose line, and connected to the solenoid. All right, we're gonna obviously clean that up with zip ties and stuff, um, but that's basically the route of the route that we're going to take. It's going the same route as many of the OEM wiring harnesses to keep it nice and clean, um, out of the heat as much as possible, and now we're gonna focus on the inside. All right, so in order to run the power wire, we're going to use this. Um, it's called a mini ADA circuit holder. Okay, so this is what's, what's going to do is if we go on the fuse box here, we're going to be able to tap into the fuses using this. This can be actually found in your local automotive store, you know, like AutoZone or Advanced Auto. Um, they're right around 10 bucks for it. Um, they're super, super convenient since we don't have to go to the back of the fuse box and, you know, we'll tap it into the wire behind it. We could just literally use this and tap, okay? So I'm gonna get this going and I'm gonna show you exactly what fuse to tap. Um, if you look at the fuse box here, it's going to show you a whole bunch of different ones, but the one that we want to get is the SIG lighter, which is right here. You see that, the 15 amp? And there's also a power outlet one too, that will work too, but SIG lighter, so if we look on here, it'll be this 15 amp right here, or this 15 amp, which is the power outlet. So whichever one you want to tap into, that's probably what we're going to end up using. And and I will wire this up and then show you uh, how it goes in. Okay, so I just actually looked at the instructions here and it says do not exceed a 10 amp a circuit for the fuse that we're tapping. So I didn't want to use the 15 amps on here. So I whipped out my voltometer and started looking at which 10 amp fuse that we can actually tap. And it looks like the module six one, right under the power outlet one, module six also turns on and off with the ignition. So that's what we're going to do, okay? So what I ended up doing is actually pull the 10 amp fuse out of the module six slot, and then insert it into here, and then insert another 10 amp onto the top. So now I have two fuses in one fuse slot, okay? Now I'm going to tap this side, or connect this side rather, to the red wire of the wiring harness and plug it in. And that's it. And on the black one, the black wire, we just need to ground it to a nice raw metal surface, um, which actually comes in handy behind the brake pedal. And I'll show you that in a minute up there uh, where we're going to connect this at, okay? Okay, you can now see where I tapped the red wire, I've, I've been, I haven't tucked it or anything, so it's hanging out. Black wire, I actually put this ring terminal on now. What we're going to do is put this on back here under that nut, okay? So we're gonna back that nut out, hook this under there, and then put the nut back on. Let me do it again, hook this under there, and then put the nut back on, and then we'll ground it. And then we're just gonna clean up the wiring, uh, mount the, the actual, controller unit uh, and the last thing we need to do is run a boost reference to the controller unit that way it shows boost on there so let me finish but finish up the wiring and then I'll get back to you okay so for the boost reference line uh, if, as you can see here he's already got a tap for his blow felt but basically on a stock car this just runs into here without the T, okay? So they teed it off, or actually I teed it off a long time ago when it, when we installed the, uh, the blow off valve form, okay? What we're going to do is we're gonna use the same line, put another T, 
possibly or like right around here. That way we can get another boost line inside to the car, okay? So let me do that and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so I just got done tapping it right here. You can see this line actually runs in through the same grommet hole as before as the wiring harness runs straight inside. I tapped it again just so you can see it again. You know, that's a line that's going to the ball valve. Like I said, normally, if you don't have an aftermarket ball valve, this would just go straight into this like a 90. And then you can just tap it off there like that, okay? Now we're gonna run that in. And it's gonna come through the same hole the wiring harness did, go up in, and I have it connected into the controller. So now before I clean everything up with the wiring and then actually mount this controller here, let's see if everything fires up. So I'm going to turn the key to ignition on and look at that, voila, it's on. So now the controller is connected with the power ground and also it is connected uh, to the solenoid. Everything should function normally. Um, again, the power is here. I'm gonna see if you can see the ground. The ground goes right there. Now all we have to do is clean these wires up so it doesn't get in this way of driving and we're pretty much set to go. Yeah.